Hi, my name is Mark Zakutansky. Welcome to Garden State Adventures. We're here in the Delaware Water Gap at the Mohican Outdoor Center, a camp operated by the Appalachian Mountain Club. We're here to enjoy some winter activities, including cross-country skiing and snowshoeing. We're going to cover everything you need to know to get outdoors this winter. Come join us on the trail. We're here with Dave Simpson, the Mohican Outdoor Center manager. Dave, how long have you been here as the manager of Mohican? This is my 14th year, going on starting January. That's great. Now, where exactly is the Mohican Outdoor Center located? Uh, we are in Blairstown, New Jersey, uh, uh, probably uh, from Philadelphia, two and a half hour drive from the New York City, uh, about one and a half hour and close to Lehigh Valley. That's great. Could you tell me a little bit more about the Appalachian Mountain Club's involvement in local outdoor recreation and conservation? Sure. Um, AMC is the, I think as most people know, the oldest uh, conservation organization in the country. Um, AMC members locally were uh, very instrumental in uh, the protection and the establishment of this park, the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area, uh, by working with other groups in the area and the National Park Service uh, with the intent to stop the uh, proposed dam project, uh, which was going to happen on the Delaware River about two miles from here, which would have resulted in this whole area being flooded out for a, a, flood, a flood zone. Dave, could you tell me a little bit more about the area's natural and historic attractions? Sure. Uh, probably the most famous would be the Delaware Water Gap itself, and that's uh, famous. Uh, the gap is basically a break between two mountains. In this case, it would be Mount Mincy in Pennsylvania and Mount Tammany in New Jersey. Uh, it's famous for its beauty, but also for its, uh, uh, its width between the mountains is one mile. Uh, the uh, distance from the top of the mountains to the Delaware River is about 1,200 feet, and the river itself is about 50 feet uh, deep uh, at its uh, deepest part uh, in the gap. Uh, historically, this has been a uh, rich history. Um, a lot of uh, early American Indian uh, remains have been found. There's several excavation sites where uh, the park has been uh, very active even recently. Isaac Van Campen, I think that back in the 18th century, was uh, a part of the Continental Congress. Wow. And uh, there was uh, between Van Campen's uh, Inn and uh, Wapak uh, Village, there was a military trail, which was a supply route for, um, uh, for the colonial army. Uh, Sam Adams was said to have stayed at the Van Campen's uh, in on his way to uh, Philadelphia, where, which was our capital at the time. Wow, that's great. Could you tell me some more about some of the activities that visitors can enjoy in the area year round? Sure, uh, well, chief among these here would be hiking. We have uh, uh, 27 miles of the Appalachian Trail uh, runs through the park and then there are a multitude of side trails or blue blaze trails that go to waterfalls, uh, different parts of the park, picnic areas, um, uh, ridges where uh, bird watching is a, a real popular event here. Um, cross country skiing it's happening today and winter hiking. Uh, that's a few of the activities. Now there's a lake here at the Mohican Outdoor Center, correct? Correct. The lake is, uh, we call it Catfish Pond. Uh, um, Mohican Outdoor Center is a site of an old Boy Scout camp, and during the early Boy Scout days, that was Wildcat Lake. And we're not sure how the name got changed, but it's now Catfish Pond. But it is a 60-acre uh, glacial lake, and so it's spring-fed, it's uh, clean water, uh, fishing is great, and uh, typically boating and swimming are, are the main attractions in the summertime. That's great. Now, Dave, do you have a favorite hike or a favorite activity? Hiking is my uh, favorite activity, I would say, here in the park. I do a lot of that, uh, but because of the demands of this job, I'm here a lot. So I'd have to say my favorite hike would be uh, the Appalachian Trail, which runs uh, right close by and connects with the Rattlesnake Swamp Trail and back to camp, about a six-mile hike. Great. That sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. Now, Dave, are there volunteers that help maintain the trails within the park? There are. Uh, AMC, as uh, I think a lot of people know, are uh, very conscientious about trail maintenance and 
we have a commitment to uh, the National Park Service here to maintain a trail crew. And so we have our Mohican trail crew, uh, which uh, works on a number of the trails uh, in the park uh, to keep them in good shape and uh, for all our visitors. And so we do our, our share. Do you see a lot of Appalachian Trail through hikers in the summer? We do. Uh, we are in proximity to the shelters. Um, the closest shelter to uh, Mohican or Adirondack Lean To is 14 miles to the north and then another 15 miles to the south. So it's a long distance between shelters. So uh, we do uh, provide uh, free camping to the 2000 miler or the through hiker and uh, uh, we, we extend to the member rate for lodging. So we do see a good number, probably the majority who have made it this far will stop here and uh, stay at Mohican somewhere in the around five, 700 a year. Great, mm -hmm. and, and Dave, what is it like staying here at Mohican? Uh, well, people have a choice to uh, stay in one of our rusty campgrounds. Uh, we have uh, probably up to 70 spots for uh, camping. Uh, and then the rest would be bunking in uh, lodge uh, bunk houses. Uh, they're co-ed unless you come with your own group. Uh, the lodges like the one we uh, we see here is uh, has kitchens and bathrooms and sleep about 16 people. So people can come as individuals or they can come with their own group and rent privately. Do you have to be a member to stay at the Mohican Outdoor Center? No, we don't. Uh, being part of the National Park Network, we're open to members and non-members alike. That's great. And what is the cost to stay at the Mohican Outdoor Center, whether it be a campground or here at one of the lodges or cabins? We are relatively competitive and uh, inexpensive. Our camping rates are $8 per person. And for uh, a bunk in one of the lodges or cabin, member rate would be $28. And is there somebody available at the Mohican Outdoor Center to help any, answer any questions or help me plan my day's activities? Absolutely. Uh, aside from myself as manager, uh, we have uh, one caretaker, uh, one housekeeper, and one youth leader. And everybody uh, is very well versed in the trails here and able to uh, uh, lend suggestions and uh, what, how to plan your hike. If what other sorts of weekend getaways are offered here at Mohican? Well, uh, one of our large getaways is our third annual spring fling coming up in April. So uh, that's uh, uh, publicized uh, widely to the whole AMC community and we fill the whole camp with that. Uh, throughout the year, we do everything from backpacking to map and compass to quilting, uh, Irish song and dance, uh, dancing. Uh, so there are a few of what we do. Great, sounds like something for everybody. We're here at the Pollens Kill Valley Rail Trail, just 15 minutes from the Mohican Outdoor Center. Joining us is Mark Kern. Mark is leading the cross-country workshop on this weekend's trip. Mark, could you tell us some more about yourself? How did you get involved with AMC and how long have you been leading trips? Um, well, I've been involved with uh, the outdoors for many years and I joined AMC probably 20 years ago. Um, I started leading local hikes. Uh, about 15 to 17 years ago, and uh, now I lead uh, winter uh, snowshoe uh, trips, uh, cross-country ski trips, and I've done some uh, bike trips also. That's great. Could you tell us some more about the Pollenskill Valley Rail Trail? What sort of activities can people enjoy here year-round? Well, this is, uh, this is one of the uh, rail trails in the country. That's, uh, it's a converted rail bed. Um, you can uh, hike, bike, uh, ski, Horseback ride, snowshoe, it's, it's really a multi-purpose, uh, multi-use trail. How many miles of trails are available for cross-country skiing? Well, the Paul and Skill Valley Rail Trail um, is a 27-mile is a trail. So um, you can ski, there's much more skiing than someone could do in a day. And are the trails open to the public? They are. This, this, uh, this is where we're standing in a parking lot that has access to the uh, Paul and Skill Rail Trail directly. That's great. And are the trails groomed or is it more of a backcountry trail? It's more of a backcountry trail. Uh, you'll find people hiking um, in, in the Pawlenskill Valley Rail Trail and um, no one really grooms the trails. Uh, the skiers actually set the tracks as they ski. Is this more of a beginner trail? And if so, what opportunities are available for a more experienced skier? 
This is, this is a flat trail. Uh, rail beds tend to be quite flat. Uh, they're great for people just learning how to ski or beginner novice skiers. Um, if you want a more ex uh, challenging experience, um, Blue Mountain Lakes uh, has some uh, wonderful ski trails which are also very close to Mohican. And uh, more, the, the, I would say intermediate skiers and uh, uh, on up in, in ability levels would uh, find uh, Blue Mountain Lakes more challenging. I'm Laurel from Kutztown. Mary LeBlanc from the province. Jenny from Allentown. Sammy from Langworth, Pennsylvania. Jane from Norristown. Jane, <laughs> 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 you're walling out. Janet from Cannersville. <laughs> You're doing an excellent job. No, I don't think so. I lead from the back. You guys are doing fine, huh? Uh, Mohican's actually in the Kittatinny Mountains. The, the mountain range that we're in now, you see the ridges over there, they're called the Kittatinnies. Well, it might be a different one, but the Kittatinnies that I know of are that northwestern New Jersey. No. no, Catskills are their own. Their own yeah. I don't know what range the Catskills are, but the Catskills are more pointed peaks, where these are ridges. Right. And you, know, you get down in these areas. You know, this is kind of the terminus of the glaciers. Oh, okay. And that's why they formed these apparently these ridges and gaps and oh. things, because they carved out the valleys. Well, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to make me fall in the snow, right? We're here with Bill Steinmetz, who's going to be leading the snowshoe workshop of this weekend's activities. Bill, could you tell me a little bit more about yourself? How did you first get involved with the Appalachian Mountain Club, and how long have you been leading trips? Well, Mark, we've been leading trips for about 20 years. And I first became involved with the Appalachian Mountain Club in the 1970s and was introduced to winter hiking and mountaineering through the club, and that's how I became hooked. That's great. Bill, I'm interested in getting involved in the sport of snowshoeing. Could you explain some of the equipment that a beginner might need to get started? Well, of course, you're going to need snowshoes. And uh, if, I don't know if you can see these. You may need poles. You may need gaiters because uh, many times uh, snowshoeing will throw snow back up on, on the back of your legs. And you'll need a pack and some poles, hat and gloves. How about dressing? How would you dress for these winter activities? Well, you have to dress in layers. Uh, you, you want to uh, stay warm by staying cool, and that means that you take clothes off when you're hot. You tend to get fairly hot when you're active and when you stop you tend to cool off and you want to have something to put on so you you have a, a layering system and of course you don't want to wear cotton because that tends to make you cooler than you need to be so you want to leave your jeans at home when you're doing winter hiking or or skiing you'll, you'll be a lot more comfortable it's great advice bill now about the trails here at mohican are they appropriate for beginners to come up and snowshoe it's a beautiful area up here. It's hard to believe that you could find an area so beautiful in northern New Jersey. You've got a glacial lake that you can snowshoe out around. There's the Appalachian Trail with, uh, that does have some gentle climbs up to a spectacular ridge with wonderful views. You've got the Rattlesnake uh, Trail that is relatively flat and excellent for beginners. And there's some other options as well. That's great, Bill. Would you mind demonstrating some snowshoe technique for me? Sure. Uh, snowshoeing is not too much different than hiking. In fact, we just had some beginners out this morning and they found it was easier than hiking because it's a much more stable walking surface. You don't find your foot bending or twisting uh, on an uneven surface or on buried rocks. Let me show you. Great.
The other thing that makes it easier are the newer, more modern snowshoes that are lighter, very much lighter than the old wooden variety, smaller, but can also become longer with the addition of tails. And the other good thing is you can become involved with snowshoeing with an investment of uh, less than $150. Um, in fact, if you go to end of season, you can even do much better than that. But um, the newer snowshoes are, many of them are made of plastic. They're extremely durable, um, are, are used in some extreme mountaineering conditions. Uh, you can get varieties that have claws for, for doing steep ascents and descents, as, as well as doing uh, flat terrain. That's great, Bill. I can't wait to get started. Now, something like this, you don't want to take out and walk around in your driveway, probably, because uh, people would really wonder about you. Um, but if you're doing serious mountaineering, if you're in the, you know, the White Mountains or something, you're doing a really or steep... some peaks in the Catskills. Yeah, it's true, even in the Catskills. Uh, this is what's called a full crampon. Um, and some groups will, will put right in their right up. You need to have a full crampon. Don't even show up unless you have you know, something like this. Um, Tell us about something about this brand or? Oh, this is Gravel. It's a fairly adaptable, uh, adjustable. You just raise a snap and change the length so you can use it with a variety of boots, including soft boots or hard boots, which is the nice thing about it. And it's fairly easy to, to put on and off. Um, probably range in the area of around $200 for a pair. But they last a lifetime. But this is the kind of thing, you know, when you see pictures of people in the Himalayas or, or whatever, this is the kind of thing that, that they're wearing. This is the, the real deal. And would you put those on, like, at the beginning of the trip? You wouldn't have to put them on the middle, right? And you just depends on the condition. Right. Yeah, some, a lot of times you, you snow snowshoeing at the lower elevations and then, you know, changing over when you, you get higher up to a cramp line. It depends on, as you said, the it's weather conditions. Steep climb. But if you're getting into really serious uh, mountaineering, this is something called a double boot, a uh, uh, Koflak plastic boot. Um, looks a lot like a ski boot, looks like it should be uncomfortable, uh, but actually they're not. And uh, if you're in really you know, steep and, and nasty terrain, this is something you want more than, uh, than the soft kind of rubber boots that we were working with today. Yeah, the nice, a couple nice features. It's very warm, very light. Uh, you can kick steps with it very effectively. And uh, it, it, when you're going down steep downhills, there's no toe bang. You know, you're wearing soft boots, and you're going downhill for a very long period of time, and it's steep. You end up sometimes uh, really compressing the, the front of your foot, so this avoids that. So there's lots of nice features about it. But it's, what, what are kickstacks? When you're it's climbing steeply, sometimes the snow is so hard packed, it's hard to get a grip on. Oh, so you if you're not yeah. wearing. If you're not wearing crampons, sometimes you can just kick steps. It's a point between putting your crampons on, and, and it's just soft snow. It's not ice, but it's hard to get up. You can kick steps with that. But One thing you do I, have to be... To, you wouldn't buy that for just that reason. I mean, you're going in really cold conditions, maybe above tree line. It's uh, maybe winter camping, even. That, that might be a nice choice. One thing you do have to be careful of, though, is when you have matching his and hers boots like this. Um, Bill was going off on a trip to the White Mountains a few years ago, and um, after he left, I went downstairs and noticed that uh -oh. Uh -oh. one of my boots and one of his boots was sitting downstairs, and uh, he actually had uh, two, was it left feet you took with you? Mm -hmm. yeah, he was kind of in a hurry that day. Yeah, like before yeah. the trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I hope we've given you some great ideas to get outdoors in the winter months, from cross-country skiing to snowshoeing. Here at the Mohican Outdoor Center, you can enjoy all sorts of activities for families, for couples, for individuals. There's really something for everybody. Come stay at a cabin, come enjoy the cross-country skiing trails and the hiking trails. In the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area, you can enjoy activities all year long and there's really no reason to sit at home on the couch. My name is Mark Zakutansky with Garden State Adventures. Be warm and stay safe.